In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Shock T for the Revenge of Sith line. I would argue that this is the best movie accurate Shock T action figure that you can get at this time. And the reason being is because of accessibility. She's a fairly easy action figure to get a hold of, whether you go to a comic book store that has a large Revenge of Sith selection, or on eBay or any other sites. She's usually very plentiful, and on top of that, she's fairly affordable. You could probably find her brand new for $20 or less. I got this action figure 2017-2018, brand new, and I think I only paid about $13 for her at the time, which is not a bad deal at all. And even if you get one loose, it's probably even less than that. And then uh, in terms of uh, likeness, I think it's uh, a pretty good looking action figure. And uh, the only thing that might be a little bit lacking with it is in the articulation department. But even then, I think the articulation is good enough. And oftentimes when I'm looking at action figures, uh, sometimes it's more important for me to just have good enough. I, I'd rather have an action figure that's good enough and pay 10 to $20 for it instead of one that's uh, maybe slightly better, but you're going to be paying hundreds of dollars for it. And I think Shock T is one of those cases. And the example I give is like the Legacy Collection action figure of her here. It's just uh, building off of this one here. And you can see the differences between the two. Uh, yes, this one, I think the paint apps are a little bit better. Yes, the articulation is better. But you're going to be paying the, through the roof for this action figure these days. While this one is pretty close to it, it's about 80% there. And it's uh, far more affordable. I didn't pay an outrageous price for the Shock T at the time I got it, but I'm glad she's a part of my collection. But she'll get her own video uh, probably coming up next. Uh, so you could treat this action figure as like a deleted scene uh, Shock T from Vengeance Sith because originally she was supposed to be in the movie. Uh, and of course, we know the infamous scene where General Grievous ends up taking her out above the battle at Coruscant and then also there was a deleted scene where she's uh stabbed in the back by now Darth Vader at the Jedi Temple during the fall of the Jedi Temple but all those scenes were ultimately cut out and I think those were pretty much all the scenes she was supposed to be featured in and of course when Hasbro originally got the plans for the film I'm sure they didn't um they were told initially that she was course supposed to be in the film so they made the action figure of her and then by the time the information came out that she wasn't going to be in the film uh, she was probably already already well in production and there was no going back but I'm glad they got an action figure of her in the line regardless take the stand off here the data pad we'll talk about in a minute so I think the head sculpt is spot on uh, of course she's the same species as Ahsoka what is it Togruta I think is the species or to Togruta something like that they did a nice job with the sculpting work in her head tails striped uh, gray and then white some grays at the tips here. In terms of her uh, paint apps, I think they did a fantastic job. Her eyes are very well defined. Uh, sometimes, I know in Attack of Clones especially, the one or two seconds we see Shock T on screen, her eyes are not very well defined and they look kind of slanted. And that's captured in this action figure right here. But by Revenge of Sith, and then of course in the Force Unleashed, she has much more defined eyes, and I think that looks really good. And of course she has the combination of red and white on her face. A very nice head sculpt. And of course she has the one head tail in the back here, which is mostly all gray. With some white mix in. In terms of the rest of her outfit, uh, pretty basic, I guess. 
a very dark brown color and she has these uh, gauntlets here which will look really nice some details on that and they even did some detail in her hands there where uh, you can see looks like her nails are painted at the end there that's something they do very often with uh, the action figures Stasa Lee has this that's uh, probably the only other action figure I can really think of that Hasbro did this for looks really nice then she does have a soft good skirt here which is a great thing not too many action figures got this back in the day then she does have the plastic loincloth there with the pattern that you see there and then she does have these ribbons basically uh, and of course they're hanging around her neck and then they drape all the way down basically to her knee And then for her pants and her boots, I think she, yeah, she mostly just has um, tan color pants there and then the br uh, dark brown boots. In terms of articulation, she does have a ball joint at the head. And despite the head tails, it's not too restricted. It is a little bit, but you can still get a decent motion out of it. Uh, mostly... You can have her look side to side even a little bit. But it's not bad for what it is. Uh, she does have hinged shoulders for both sides. Now, uh, here's where the articulation is a little bit different. So her right arm here, she has a swivel elbow and then a swivel forearm. While on her left side, she does not have any articulation at all, which is interesting. And I think the reason being is to accommodate for holding that data pad. They just want to make sure it's at the right angle, which is kind of understandable, but it's not really a hindrance having the two different articulation points for both sides. I think it's kind of unique. Uh, she does have a swivel waist there, then swivel hips, then hinged knees, and is there ankle articulation? No, there's not. So pretty good articulation at this time, I think. And in terms of accessories, she does have her lightsaber. She, as you can see, it does have a peg on it where you can put it on her belt. And the blade should be removable. You know? By 2005, this was something that was being phased out. And even by then, we didn't see too many action figures have this feature. Uh, but you can fit it on her belt right there. Let's see if I can actually fit it. Yep, and that looks pretty good. Nice blue blade. And then, yeah, she doesn't stand the best on her own sometimes. Kind of hard to get that hill on her belt because of the head tail right there. She does have a stand, which this is uh, supposed to be at the Jedi Temple. Very nice one to have. Then she comes with this data pad here, which is a very unique accessory. I've never seen anything like this released with any other figure. I would assume it has something to do with the Jedi Temple, and I wonder... If this had anything to do with a potential scene she was supposed to be in that ended up not even getting getting into uh, the rendering phase. You have the screen there and then you have the buttons right there. But that'd be something interesting to know. Was there a potential scene where Shock T was supposed to use a data pad at some point? We'll never know probably. But the fact Hasbro made it must mean something because I don't think they would just give her a random data pad for nothing 
as you can see, like I mentioned with that uh, left arm there, I think Hasbro did it like that to accommodate for the data pad. It looks pretty good. She can hold it at a very natural pose. And hold it just at the right angle where it seems uh, natural. Like her thumb is just hovering over the actual pad there. But I think that's all I can really tell you about Shock T here. We'll do a couple quick comparisons. Of course, the next video I'll probably be doing, the Legacy Collection Shock T. Fantastic action figure as well, but if you're looking uh, for something more on a budget, definitely the Revenge of Sith one. Uh, then, of course, we have the Force Unleashed Shock T, which I do have reviewed on the channel. Recommend checking that out. Then I, was, I suppose I'll show this one as well. Uh, which will also be getting a video here coming soon, and that is the Clone War Shock T. I would say these are, uh, this is just about all the Shock T action figures you can get from Hasbro. The only other one I'm missing is the Attack of Clones one, I think. But between these four here, these are definitely the best versions of her, and they're all fantastic action figures. So would I recommend this Revenge of Sith? Shock T for your collection. I totally would. I think she's one of the best ones for the Revenge of Sith line. I'm a big fan of Shock T anyway, so of course I want just about every action figure of her. And I think she's a great character. Very interesting character, even outside of her uh, story in the Star Wars lore, just from all the different instances that were made for her and then uh, ultimately cut. Definitely, uh, she has nine lives, I suppose. But if you don't have the Shock T for your collection, highly recommended. But anyways, that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for plenty more reviews in the future. There will always be more to come. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I would appreciate all your support. And check out some of the links in the description if you haven't done so already. As always, thanks for watching.